A few days ago, a friend of mine reached out to me about building a PC, a gaming PC to be exact. So with a specific budget that was chosen, these are the parts that I've picked out for today's build. So let's dive right in so I can hurry up and build this PC for Noah. I am extremely excited. So welcome to today's video, and we're gonna get ready with the build in just a moment, but first, I need to address the elephant in the room. If you watched my last video, you may have saw a teaser at the end of that video talking about building in a mini ITX 100 Pro Mesh PC cooler case, which I was very excited about and would love to have finished the video for you. I actually did record footage and pretty much recorded building the whole PC. But towards the end of making that video, I reached the conclusion that there was a necessary part that was missing, or rather incorrect in the build. Once that part came in, I wanted to make sure that it was actually correct for the build. And then once acknowledging that it was, it sat on my office floor for several days. With the day approaching that I was going to be finishing that video, a friend of mine reached out to me in the need of a streaming computer. Luckily, I had one on hand that I could easily prepare and sell to them for the cost that it took me to actually put the parts together. And they have been happily using that streaming computer now for several days. So I'm sure at some point in the future, I'll be getting another mini ITX system around to build for something or someone. But until that time, you'll just have to wait. Or you have no knowledge of exactly what I'm talking about because you did not see the ending of the last video. But without any further ado, let's get back to building this computer. So just to do a little recap, I was approached actually a few weeks ago and he was interested in having a computer for his son to play Microsoft Flight Simulator. I am familiar with Microsoft Flight Simulator, although I've never played it or used it myself, but I have seen videos and reviews of those who have used Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I do know that it requires a decent amount of horsepower to be able to run and run and enjoy it at the same time. So I went to the computer right away, PC part picker, put together a couple of builds for him, tried to do one kind of around, I think it was $800 price point, maybe one that's around like the $1,000 to $1,200 price point, just to give him an idea of something that I would build probably right off the top of my head. Then as time kind of started creeping up a little closer to now, he gave me a list of pre-built computers that he had found and he was looking at and he wanted me to check the specs to see if I thought that they'd be decent computers. I also checked the price, which typically seems to be anywhere between the $1,200 and $1,500 mark. I could see that there was a list of some specific hardware like the motherboards, the CPUs, the memory, and the video card, but not much else specifically. I think it did list the power supply now that I think about it. And most of them were all good parts, but I wasn't sure about the case that he'd be getting or maybe even perhaps the specific kind of solid state drive that would be going into the system. And not only that, but choosing the right aesthetics if you care about how it looks or any of those other minor details that could matter once you get the system in hand. So I suggested that you should just build one yourself. He kindly offered that if I'd like to build it for them, sure. He gave me a specific budget of $1,300. So to start things off, we've got the Ryzen 7 5800X3D. This is an excellent CPU. I have used it once before in another build for my friend Luke, who upgraded from a 5600X. Yes, 5600X, which that CPU is now in my friend John's computer. Check out that video if you haven't seen it already. You know, the one with the teaser I just mentioned about. Anyway, the difficult decision with the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D is really and truly the fact that it's on the AM4 platform, which has been out for a little while now and has been usurped by the AM5 platform and the new Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. But for what the 5800X 3D offers, it's still very competitive and still very good and comes close with the new Ryzen 7000 series of chips and even the 3D models. Also, it supports DDR4 on all of the AM4 platforms, so memory can be a little bit cheaper, although DDR5 has come down quite a bit in price. And because he's using this system specifically for games, I felt that it would probably be the best overall for what he was going to be experiencing. I was also having a hard time deciding between this or the i5-13600K, which the 14600K was really just a little more expensive for not much more performance. So the 13600K was definitely the better buy of those two. But overall, the 13600K was better for productivity and a whole range of other applications. The 5800X3D was better in the gaming category, which is exactly what he was going for. So with the Ryzen 5800X3D, we also chose our motherboard, which is this Gigabyte 
B550 Aorus Elite AX V2. He wasn't really needing the X570 chipset for any of major connectivity or hard drive storage or speed in terms of several M.2s, but for a gaming computer, the B550 chipset is more than adequate. It gives him everything that he needs with a good beefy cooling on the VRMs, as well as some very good connectivity for M.2s and I.O. on the back and on the front for his case. It also should match nicely with a good aesthetic with some of the other products that we've purchased in the mix. So it was a pretty good choice, I think. I was also looking at some Asus motherboards and some MSI motherboards, but ultimately decided to go with the Gigabyte board. Um, it had a nice aesthetic and I really liked it. And it seemed to go well with the other parts that we used in the system. So it also has built-in Wi-Fi in case that's a need and he wants to use that instead of LAN. The next thing we have is to keep our CPU cool. This is the Deep Cool AK400 Zero Dark model. I have used the AK400 cooler before. I like the aesthetic. It should go well with the sort of darker theme that we've got going on with all the other components. And it should do a decent job cooling the CPU as well. We also have our RAM modules, which I am using these. These actually came from another system that were not being used, and it saved a little bit of money for him, so he didn't have to purchase these. So these are some Team Group T-Force Delta R memory modules uh, designed for Radon in mind. And these are 16 by 16 gigabyte sticks, so 32 total. And we have uh, DDR4 3600 mega transfers, and it is a CL latency of 18, 22, 22, 42 at 1.35 volts. They also are RGB. There's not a whole lot of RGB in this system, although there is a little bit here and on the motherboard. Next, we have our graphics card. Now, this was also a very difficult decision and something that was actually decided earlier on in the build process because graphics cards, especially today, are such a major part of a gaming computer in terms of budgeting, uh, they are the most expensive part. And with some of the CPU and exception, still in this gaming computer setup, the graphics card was by far the most expensive component. And really trying to wedge in an RTX 4070 in the mix was really difficult. And uh, I started off with the RTX 4070, trying to fit all the other components and trying to fit within that $1,300 envelope, but it just wasn't happening. So I went ahead and backtracked to the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte model, and it did save us about a hundred and some odd dollars, and it allowed us to be able to get some of the other components to a standard that I felt was a little bit better. So we chose the RTX 4060 Ti, the gigabyte model, which should do a pretty nice job, and it should remain very quiet for him. Then we also have our power supply. This is the Corsair RM 750E. This is a fully modular power supply, so you only need to use the cables that you need, and rather than having a whole stash of cables that you're not using stuck in the case somewhere, uh, it is nice that you're able to open that up for not just airflow, but just convenience-wise. However, you want to make sure you keep that box close by with extra power cables on hand in case you ever upgrade your graphics card or change something. This graphics card I do believe uses one 8-pin power connector, so it's not a really power-hungry card, but you have several options. It also is ATX 3.0 ready with that extra uh, 12VH power connector in case he gets a higher-end RTX card in the future. It also is a very quiet power supply and should handle with the gold rating excellent power coverage for everything he's going to be using in this system. A little bit overkill, but better to be a little bit over definitely rather than cutting it close when it comes to a power supply. We also have the Corsair 4000D Airflow. I have built in several Corsair cases before, but never in the 4000D Airflow. From what I can tell, this is a great case with all the reviews that I've seen, so I'm excited to build in this thing and uh, it should be pretty quiet for him uh, overall with everything in the system. And we also have some Asia Horse power supply extension cables, which these are just a great way to add just a little extra to the build to give it a little bit of uh, cleanliness and a little bit of organization. And uh, I've used these now in several builds, including my own, and it really does help. The only thing, unfortunately, if he ever uses that 12VH power connector, that is not something that is included in this kit. Uh, but this one does include, I think, the 24 pin, a couple of the eight pins for CPU, and then I think three of the six plus two connectors for graphics cards. So I think pretty much that's all the parts. Oh, one more thing. Here we have the Team Group MP44L M.2 NVMe SSD. I chose the MP44L version of this drive instead of the MP44. 
because of the cost, it was actually a little bit cheaper and it's still a very fast drive. Uh, I believe this one is about 5,400 megabytes per second read and about 4,800 or 4,600 write, something like that. A very good drive should offer some great speeds, terabyte of storage. You can always add more storage later in the future. Well, I think that's all the parts and everything that we need to discuss. I think at this point, we just need to put the system together. But first, hydration. I'm ready. Okay, I've moved the camera into a better angle. Hopefully you should be able to see a little bit more of what I'm doing. So let's get started. Oh, keys, very good. Oh, you're fine, stay there. Our cat has decided to join as well or leave. No, the door is closed, you can't make it out. Let me open the door for you. He is free. All they want is freedom. Now this is not a PC building tutorial at all. However, there are certain things in the process by which I like to build and to start. I typically will begin with the motherboard. But first, before the motherboard, we need our anti-static mat. Perfect. Pay no attention to the cable that's not plugged into the anti-static mat. All right, look at that. Set that aside. All right, in the box we've got a cable combiner, whatever you want to call that, G connector, Gigabyte calls it. Helps to enable to all the pins that are very annoying to build a PC, which I'm surprised they haven't changed, but they're still the same. Kind of helps combine that a little bit, makes it a little bit easier. A couple SATA cables in case you ever have a SATA hard drive or an SSD but we're using NVMe, so we don't need that. And then we have the actual Wi-Fi adapter, which I will leave out because I'm gonna test that, make sure that it's fully functional for him. I think he said he was wanting to use Wi-Fi for convenience. All right, that is very nice. Gigabyte tends to do a pretty good job with the board layout and design. It's always a very nice aesthetic. Kind of like this gunmetal gray slightly with black and accents. Typically, they also have pretty good audio on board now. I remember back in the day when audio and motherboards used to be so bad, and now uh, they are much improved. We need our CPU. Now, this motherboard should have the latest BIOS. The 5800X 3D has been out for quite a while. You might want to make sure if you're using the 5800X 3D in your system, you might need a BIOS update first. Here we are. Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. Oh, it's nice, it's pretty, it's all shiny. If you're installing a CPU, we just wanna make sure that the gold arrow is facing the arrow on the motherboard. Typically with Ryzen, the logo is faced where it's reading that way. I'm gonna make sure that everything looks good on the bottom. And we're gonna use the zero force insertion method by placing the CPU, give it a little jiggle, and it slides right into the socket and let the latch down. Not sure if he'll want to use this Ryzen 7 sticker, but he very well may want to do that. I'm also going to bring my handy dandy magnetic iFixit pad over here. I like to be able to use that. Because we're using an NVMe SSD, I'm going to go ahead and install that now. And this motherboard in particular comes with nice heat sinks for both of the M.2 slots, which is very nice. So much tape. I need tools. This video is not sponsored. I do not have any sponsors, but I do use my iFixit kit, which is very trustworthy and reliable. There is a piece to peel off for connecting the heatsink to the M.2. Whoops. Make sure the screw is on the end of the screwdriver and push that down and screw it in. Doesn't take much force, just making sure that it's nice and snug. These little guys don't really go for much of a drive. Bouncing around, they're pretty steady. And now we'll take the heatsink and place it into the slot. And screw that into place. Thank you. We have the M.2 drive installed. We have the CPU installed. And before I put in the memory, I'm gonna go ahead and install the CPU heatsink and fan. But before I do that, I'm gonna peel off this nice plastic that's keeping our motherboard safe and beautiful. I can't grab it. Well, I've only built, you know, hundreds of computers. I know how to peel plastic off. I always wonder who does the marketing for these companies, you know? Amp up, fight on. What if I don't want to fight? What if I want to make friends? 
Oh, is there a piece of plastic on there too? No, that's entirely textured aluminum right there or aluminum. Hmm. All right, Deep Cool, let's see how complicated you're gonna be. If I remember correctly, it's not that bad. There she is. Oh, all right, just a note, there is pre-applied thermal paste, which I will be using. Should work very well. The plastic piece that did come off in the bottom protects that so you don't accidentally smear that material just like that. So we're gonna just set that aside. AM4, AM4. Yes, we have the fan, we have the heat sink, we have the brackets. How nice of them to include. Uh, we also have the fan bracket, but we don't need these. So we will put these back in the bag in case he ever decides to use those. For the AMD system, it looks like we will be using, these are AMD. The Gs have 1700, then there's the 1150, uh, which would be for a much older socket, AMD. All right, first thing we gotta do is remove the old AMD bracket, which is pretty much what you do with 90% of coolers. Wow, whoever put these in did not hold back their might. Ugh. It's funny that you actually even need to uninstall these for most AMD coolers that come in the boxes. Now the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D did not come with a cooler. They expect you to get an aftermarket cooler. And because of its 3D memory cache, which is better for gaming, it does require that it stay cooler than the other typical Ryzen CPUs. What I'll typically do is put those in a bag and put those in the motherboard box so he will not lose them in case he ever sells the motherboard or decides he wants to use a cooler that does take advantage of the AM4 bracket that is pre-installed. Looks like the Deep Cool cooler does use the AM4 back bracket, which we will keep. We will now put these orange, I guess they're like spacers. That looks right. Ah, shifting too much. Stop moving. Once the bracket's installed, we're just now gonna take this, leaving the thermal paste intact right there. We will attach this with the fan in front of the memory module area to go over and across the VRMs to the back side of the case. Always wanna make sure we get it right where we want it. One, two. Uh-oh. It might be a good idea to remove the fan before installing the cooler. I have done this before. You have a couple turns on each side. And to my knowledge, you should be able to go all the way until the screw stops. Now we'll install our memory. Uh-oh, it's got my fingerprints. Can't leave any forensic evidence. We'll install these into the A1 and B1 slots. For the dual channel memory configuration, keep the notch in the right spot. Firm, snug, nice click sound. So satisfying. We will now reattach our fan. Warranty void if removed. Well, you're in the way. You're too white. If the fan fails, I'll replace it. And we'll place that into the CPU fan socket. Beautiful. Actually, I'm gonna tidy that up. I can't, I can't, I can't leave it. Whoop, that's a big zip tie. <laughs> Don't need that zip tie. There we go. All right, let's take out the memory module. This will be better. It's good not to use twisty ties with things that are gonna be close to the motherboard. Because twisty ties have metal inside them typically. And if that metal ever becomes exposed and touches the motherboard, but a plastic zip tie, now that does not conduct electricity. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, so nice. All right, moving right along so wonderfully. All right, we got most of our main components on the motherboard. It's time to get the case and start working on that. A few moments later. I just found that the camera shut off about 25 minutes ago. So much has happened since that time. Uh, I have put the motherboard aside. I went ahead and got the case out and went through the process of making sure all the standoffs were in the right position. I put the motherboard inside, made sure I had the right screws, solidified that in the case. Then I just went through and did some rearranging of the fans. Uh, and I have done some cable management, just about to put the power supply in and decided to check the camera. Lo and behold, 
the camera had stopped recording. So, what you're about to see is going to be a much further along the process of PC that I have already put together. So much labor, so many words exchanged between myself, but nonetheless, let's continue and show you the progress by which Noah's computer is being done. As you can see, I have so many things installed by now. I have rearranged the fans. One that was on the back, I moved it to the front. So now two fans bringing air in. One fan will be exhausting air out the back. This will create a positive airflow uh, environment, which will hopefully keep dust at minimum and will allow for some natural cooling. Heat will rise, also exhaust. With all that being said, I just got finished connecting up all these front panel connectors for his top IO right up here. So he does have the USB 3.0 front panel connector. He does have the USB 3.2 uh, panel connector, as well as the Gigabyte G connector that enables him to plug in all of his power switch and reset switch uh, more easily. And then also I've done the HD audio jack. So if he needed to, he could also use the audio jack in the front. Right now, I was just about to put in the power supply. Dee dee dee, half my video was not recorded. Sometimes it helps to sing. More cable ties, cable screws, or cable screws. Some safety and compliance information. Power cable. All the extra power cables to use internally. All right, look at that. Pretty nice little size there. Space saving. And obviously no cables connected. The cables that we're gonna need will be the 24 pin main power for the motherboard. We will need the four pin plus four pin power connector for the CPU. Uh, we will make sure we confirm the graphics card, but I'm pretty sure it only uses one PCI Express connector. We'll take the extra cables, put them back into the box. Hopefully they will not be lost. We're gonna use the four screws that came with the power supply. I'm gonna go ahead and take the graphics card out of the box and just double check the eight pin power. Oh, it's actually lighter weight than I was thinking. I guess after you own a 7900 XTX, a lot of cards tend to feel lighter. Oh, wow, tape is like crime scene tape. People were killed in the making of this product. Oh yeah, very nice. I like the uh, gray, it should match the motherboard aesthetic. Good ventilation for the fans to breathe air through. You've got your uh, two HDMI and two DisplayPort connectors. Good bit of heatsink. Should keep everything nice and cool. And there's the one eight pin power connector. It does have a dual BIOS switch and it is in the overclocked BIOS setting, which is really where we want it to be. And now we will do some cable management. This is the most tedious and time consuming to actually do. So we want to use the cable extensions from Asia Horse. These are the gray and black cables. I'm not sure how much of it you'll actually be able to see, but it will be very nice looking if you can see. Clean system is a happy system. Cleanliness is next to godliness, even for a gaming PC. Just add a second one for anything that appears to be not wanting to follow through. Lovely, and we'll get that to be trained nice for a curve that looks really good. Yep, that's what I thought. This needs to be closer. All for that little bit of cable that you might see. Oh, that looks really good. And it's important to see what side of the graphics card the clip is for the power. This one, the clip is on the top. So we will be connecting these this way. Okay, there's one. We'll probably put four on this because, oop, wrong ones, fellas. What we're gonna try to do is come up through this so we can put this on the graphics card without damaging anything we have in place 
like taking that out like I just did. Good note, we should put that on first. Excellent job, I like it. All right, this will need to be tucked somewhere. Ah, cable management. How I abhor you. And then for you, which probably, if anything, everybody's gonna see you the least. Which way is the connector? That way. There it goes. Whew, that took a while to latch. The art of tucking away cables. All right, next moment of truth. Graphics card. Oh yeah. That slotted in very nicely. We shall now reattach the thumb screws with thumb screw tension, not like before. I think the Asia Horse cable and cable combs look very good. They just add that much more to the whole thing. All right, cable management time. There you are. Everything should still be accessible. Now, if you ever need to add more power for more drives, I highly suggest upgrading the NVMe SSD first. It's much easier to access. Just take out the graphics card, put it in the next NVMe. It's faster, more convenient. If you have to install a two and a half inch, you can install another SATA power cable, put that right in there. Should be really nice. A few loose cables here and there. I don't think that's a problem. That should be nice. Goes all the way down. Everything's out of the way. Put the front panel back on. Handle for the filter should be facing out. Those latches in, it's magnetic, so it just goes right on the front. This one has the bottom long piece there. It should be right on the top, pegs go into the pegs, snap it right in. Side panel for the cable side. Put the top here. For now, I'm just going to take off the inside plastic cover for the glass. And that is pretty much the build. But first, we have to power it on. Let's take a look. Oh yes. Oh man, that's pretty good right there. So you got some RGB on the motherboard there, white LED fan, RGB on the RAM sticks, and a little bit of RGB on the cooler. It's pretty clean. Nice, power uh, cable, power and power up there for the CPU power. Looks good. All right, well, all that's left is to install Windows and all the drivers and some software that I think maybe he might use, and then hopefully makes the uh, process of getting it set up even that much more easy. And uh, then I just got to uh, give it to him.
Okay, I'm up on the gymnasium stage and the guys are playing basketball. They're gonna finish in just a few minutes. We're gonna celebrate Noah's birthday, show him his PC. I went ahead and took out the white LED fan and added a light strip. Changed everything to blue, because I think he likes blue, so he knows he's getting a PC, but he doesn't know what it looks like or what's in it. So we'll see what he thinks. If you dig it, you have still. Very good. <laughs> so let's try to start in the fella here. A <clears throat> little bit of water goes a long way.